Before leaving office, Rosemanuel Barroso helped to broker a breakthrough gas deal. Moscow and Kyiv have now sealed an agreement after several hours of tense talks in Brussels. Previous rounds in recent weeks have failed. The deal on supplies and transit to Europe have allayed EU fears of staying in the cold this winter. Well, here are the key points of the agreement. Kyiv will now get gas at a price of $378 per thousand cubic meters. That's a $100 discount on the previous price. Ukraine will have to pay over $3 billion of debt to Russia by the end of the year. And an advanced payment system will be used for future gas supplies. Let's bring in William Engdahl, geopolitical analyst and author of the book Myths, Lies and Oil Wars. Thank you so much, Mr. Engdahl, for joining us here on RT International to discuss this. Well, as we know, it took months to negotiate. What were the major stumbling blocks there between the parties? Well, uh, the major stumbling block is that Washington wanted to play uh, energy poker with, with Russia. And I think the only reason that this came to this, this is only a short-term a bandage uh, to get through to next March when the winter, worst, the winter is over for the European Union and also for Kiev, but mainly the EU, because Germany does not want uh, this thing to shut off the gas supplies to the EU in, in this coming winter, and other Euro European countries, of course, not also. So uh, I don't think this is by any means reason to pop champagne corks in, in, uh, in Moscow or, or certainly not in Kiev. But, okay, uh, but, um, you know, uh, you just mentioned earlier uh, that uh, for some time in this deal will go on, but uh, as we know, it applies until um, March next year. But what will be happening afterwards, of course, is a big question. Well, that is the big question. The question is whether Kiev, whether after these new elections, uh, the poroshenko uh, Yatsenyuk combination will get rid of the, the neo-Nazis that are running the interior ministry, the defense ministry, and so forth, and put some uh, reasonable non-oligarch uh, figures in there that, that are trying to get Ukraine back to a, a functioning state. Uh, Washington has not changed its policy one iota, as far as I can see. So I expect that they're going to pressure Ukraine to restart the military actions against uh, East Ukraine sometime in the spring. But this is just a winter pause. Let's hope not, but uh, all indications are that that is the case. Well, the EU and uh, the IMF have agreed to give Ukraine financial aid to pay its debt to Moscow. But can we be sure that uh, this aid will be um, allocated um, in the right, the, the money will go in the right direction? Well, I have to say the, the patience of the Putin government and Gazprom in this whole situation is, is to be commended because uh, the EU has made no indications of, of being ready to lift the sanctions against Russian energy companies that the U.S. Treasury has demanded of, uh, of Brussels and of Germany. Uh, they're still uh, on a de facto financial and economic warfare footing uh, between the EU and Russia. So I, I think the EU, if they were going to show good faith in all these negotiations, they would begin lifting the sanctions that they put on Russia and, and creating a basis for a longer term agreement on Gazprom and, and uh, deliveries to Europe and to uh, Kiev. All right. William Engdahl, thanks so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and talking to us with geopolitical analyst and author of the book Myths, Lies and Oil Wars. Thank you.